telling y'all about these crazy ass white women in America. I'm talking about what's up with these white women who keep calling the damn cops on black people. This y'all is even just beyond stupid. Okay. All right, folks, back to our Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. You heard me talk about our friends at Transatlantic Real Estate who created a unique investment opportunity that combines legal marijuana and crowdfunding. Now, let this sit in for a second and think about the growing momentum around legal marijuana in this country. It's been over, been all over numerous ballots. Of course, we know it's legal in a number, number of different states. And now, of course, you can be an investor. And there's never been a better opportunity to get in the game. Now, as markets grow, it's harder and harder to get in, which means that you might have to spend millions or billions just to do so. Well, this issue right here, though, makes it special. This unique opportunity, transatlantic real estate, folks, what they're going to do for you is what they're going to offer is a business model that's very easy to understand. They buy land that supports marijuana grow operations and lease it to licensed high paying tenants. So let me say it again. You're investing in the landlord of a licensed marijuana farm. And the best part is they're using crowdfunding to make it easier for the average person to get in before they take the company public. So you can uh, invest as little as 300 bucks up to $10,000. And listen, you must complete and confirm your application to participate in this opportunity. This essentially says, don't just fill out half the ballot. You got to fill the whole thing out. Uh, and again, a lot of people have missed out because they rushed and didn't complete the process. So just simply go to marijuanastock.org. If you want to invest, go to marijuanastock.org. You certainly want to get in the game and do it right now. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video. This white woman is a professor at the University of Texas, San Antonio. Okay? So I'm, I'm on Twitter today, and I see this Twitter feed with this video. Okay? And a student says, y'all cannot believe what happened in my class. Press play. Uh, what you have here is you have the students in the classroom uh, who, of course, uh, they were watching this play out. And so... This professor, okay, she calls the cops. She says that the, that the sister was disrespected because she had her feet up on another chair. Y'all, her feet were propped up. Now, this professor has often complained in class that her students are too uncivil in how they behave. Okay, let me explain to you again. Her feet were propped up. Mm, I was a four-year student at Texas A&M. I can recall putting my damn feet on a desk, in front, a chair in front of me. Now, the other students say the sister wasn't disruptive. She wasn't yelling. She wasn't screaming. She wasn't doing anything. She was listening to the lecture. But this professor called the cops. They came out and escorted her out. University has released this statement. Okay, first of all, here's a tweet from the student who was removed from the classroom. Uh, this is me in Anita Moss's 2053 bio classroom. Upon entering class, I was told I needed to leave or would be escorted out by officers. I never disobeyed the student code of conduct, not once. A police report is being filed, a uh, ATM. Uh, and this is just the beginning. Thanks for your support. Now, here's what the president of the university said in a statement sent out to the entire university. Dear Roadrunners, today we had our, an incident where one of our African-American students was escorted from, from a biology class by members of the UTSA's police department at the request of a faculty member. While the facts aren't fully known regarding today's incident, our Office of Equal Opportunity Services is already conducting an investigation into possible discrimination. In addition, an inquiry regarding the academic management of the classroom is being conducted by interim dean of the College of Sciences, Howard Grimes. Now, okay, so that was a letter uh, that came uh, from the university uh, president. And guys, I'm going to pull up, I'm going to give him his name in one second because, again, I want to have all these details. Uh, and so it's interesting that when, when you look at this and you look at, Again, this 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 note this this idea of continuing to call the cops in a college classroom. White women better come and get their other sisters because they're acting up <laughs> and they need help and they got to do it. I mean, white women need to take some responsibility over other white women and this misbehavior. I mean, we can't be everywhere where they're having these gratuitous conversations about how scared they are. And you saw about this white woman who ran into the tree. 
She looked up and saw a black woman got so scared she ran into a tree. No. I mean, this is what's happening in this society. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe if stop this. when you when you when you call the police and it's and you're filing a false yeah. police report, you're arrested for filing a false report, right? <laughs> right? So maybe if the police start arresting the people that are calling and these crazy calls right right then uh, maybe I, I, yeah. I, then I need the cops I need to stop calling the cops, cops on these simple things I need things. the cops to cuss these white women out <laughs> but no, if, no. They, if they start arresting if they start arresting these women for these calls right. the calls would stop well it's a right. waste of resources too so what, what are the cops doing if they're at the university arresting right. a person with their feet on the on and the desk i think desk? it was three or four, did, four cops it's, that came it's in absurd the room. Like, you're, you're you're moving resources they should be held accountable for these false these false things the other the, the other quick question i have is just where in america uh, are black people safe so you have you know black people are getting shot on the streets, in their <coughs> homes, this guy was, uh, you know, in his home watching TV. Uh, this is a good guy with a gun, got shot, all, all over. And now it's, it's the same thing that's contributing to this type of stuff too, where people are getting called. It's a, it's a way to control. It's, it's straight up racism, and, and, it's, and, it, and, and it's unacceptable. And I think it's crazy. Again, remember you have a student at uh, Yale. Remember the black girl was sleeping, then they called Never the cops. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, who the hell? goes to a, a university library with a backpack to go to sleep and oh I'm, i wasn't sure she was a student i mean i mean literally what you have is and yeah that was a white woman uh and what what you have here is 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 you have these white women who for some reason uh have this superior attitude of i'm going to call the cops on any of y'all for whatever y'all doing and i'm telling you right now that professor has no business in the classroom. Right. Now, if you're a professor, if you say, like, for look, if you're a professor and you say, you know what, y'all a bunch of slouches and stuff along those lines, I need you sitting up in my classroom. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, want, I don't want feet on desks in a classroom. That's me laying down mm -hmm. the rules of my classroom. You don't call the cops on somebody. Hold up, you do what you do as a professor. If you're sitting here, hear the rules, everybody got a copy of the rules. If you get busted, I'm docking you five points. Okay, that's what you do. You don't call the cops. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just the it's just modern day slavery because you know when we're in white quote white spaces in their mind, they want our pass. <coughs> well, no, why are you here? What is this your place? Do you belong here? You don't belong here. We're just gonna call cops. And then on the other hand, it's this quote insubordination. Listen, I went to Duke Law School. There was we had large sections like what we just saw. There was a guy who would bring a big old inflated doll as kind of like his contempt for the, for the process, mm. would sit up next to him in class, and when the professor said anything he thought was stupid, he would make the doll roll back and forth. And nobody, nobody, <laughs> nobody disciplined him. He did it every day he wanted to do it. So come on, you know, he was white, of course. And so this is just nonsense, and we need to just call it out because this is that white <coughs> ethnic racism that says you don't belong in our white country, and we don't want you here, and we're going to do everything we can to make you uncomfortable, and hopefully you'll leave. And see, the issue that you also have here is this here. If the student had done anything, mm -hmm. first of all, her reaction, and, and, th and this really is the greater problem. The onus is on us as black people mm -hmm. to say nothing, do nothing. So we, th th this is how we have to be. Okay, I'm not going to react. Now, you can't convince me if a white professor calls a cop on a white student, especially a white boy, mm -hmm. and he ain't going to act a fool. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, no. Because the reality is, she said she couldn't do anything because I might die in a chokehold. Hell, I might get tased. That's right. I might get shot. That's right. Because of something simple as her feet were propped up on a desk. I mean, that's the definition of entitlement. Look at how right. Brett Kavanaugh reacted Oof. in his Supreme Court hearing. It was completely out of out of uh, out of left field and just crazy. If if we as people of color do anything even close to that. We're immediately expelled. We're immediately called out. We're immediately called angry, black, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know there is this double standard that needs to change because it is playing out on all different levels. Oh, not oh, only oh. not only in the classrooms, not only on the streets, but yeah, at wait. the voting booth as well. Oh, please. So, so, so I want to read yes. the re I want to read the rest of the letter from the university okay. president, uh, Taylor Agni. This is what he said. This concerns me greatly, and it's incumbent upon us as an institution to face this head on. 
It's something that we need to address immediately as a university community. <clears throat> I look forward to the arrival of Dr. Myron Anderson, our new Vice President for Inclusive Excellence, to assist us with developing a strategy to address these systemic issues. I welcome your concerns being shared directly with me in my office by emailing, uh, he has, has his email. I promise to begin this process immediately. It will take time, but it has my full commitment. Now, first, mm -hmm. wise of a university president to immediately address this issue, going to the entire university. But this is something that, and, and I get it, okay, you're having a vice president for inclusive excellence coming in, but this is why I need white people right. to check other white people. There you go. Okay? Right. You don't need somebody black or Latino <laughs> or Asian to be hired <laughs> right. to teach y'all how not to be dumbasses. <laughs> you don't need that, okay? <laughs> so you can actually teach your own fellow white people not to act a damn fool. But this really, this really is the deal, no. It, it is as if part of our job is like, okay, white America, let me explain to y'all mm -hmm. why y'all stupid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, I, there's no way in the world to me that class continue with her, with her as professor. That's right. She needs to be fired. Yeah. I, mean, you know, I mean, listen, certain people just don't belong in the jobs they're in. They need to be out, they need to be gone, they just need to be held accountable, and these schools can't be talking about, well, we all gonna get together, kumbaya, diversity, inclusion, lives. no! Some folks are just so racist, they don't deserve to be empowered to even instruct. That's the problem in how this has been addressed in the past. It's always relegated to the diversity council, <laughs> right. let's set up a task force, let's do some training, and it'll all go away. That is not how to address this. It, 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 it has to go all the way up to the team. <coughs> People need to be fired and held right. accountable. And that's there. We were talking earlier about hiring. You know, you don't hire people just to do black things or brown things. We need, it, it is a systemic thing as a way to pacify us when these things erupt. We need to hold people accountable really? as a community. But uh, to your point, Roland, white people also need to hold themselves accountable right. if they actually do care about this stuff. Time for her to go? Stay or go? <laughs> oh, you said, I don't know, you called my name. <laughs> I was like, hello, hello, hello. You're one of three panelists yes, on the I show. Uh, can you stay with us? Yes, I was here. I was listening Lord to his have response. Mercy. No, 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 no. No, I think that she should be held accountable. I think that it was, the, the, her reaction to that was absolutely insane. Everyone in that classroom had a phone. Now that they can take pictures and videotape yes. things like that, and that yes. probably would have been a really good idea because that's probably something that I probably would have done because I keep my phone with me all the time. But, um, but it's, it, 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 was, it was idiotic. It was, there was no reason for her to do that. And again, we need to be, she does need to be held accountable for it. Mm -hmm. And where was and the solidarity? Why didn't the no, other no, students no, 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 that's not, no, that's not true. It did happen. So here's what happened. Oh, they did. Uh, you mean there were other to, students go, that Go to my iPad, okay, Henry. Good. She tweeted, uh, the young lady, um, she tweeted, I seriously can't thank my class enough good. for this love. They literally stood up for me after I was escorted out good. by three officers and called her out for being disruptive to them Excellent. as well as this whole semester. Completely overwhelmed Excellent. and okay. thankful. So, all right, good. so we'll, we'll surely let you know uh, what happens there. Uh, in a, but I'm UTSA. And first of all, I did reach out directly to University of Texas San Antonio uh, for them to come on the show. They sent us that particular statement. And, uh, and also, I reached out to the student uh, as well. And so we tried to get her on as well. And so we'll certainly let y'all know uh, what happens with that story. All right.